Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to episode 41. Where did we leave off in episode 40? Apis is in the town of Fonderg. Apis was, uh, had just been um, accosted by the Thieves' Guild, introduced to The Fiend, a uh, small hobbit that runs the Thieves' Guild. And they, <clears throat> Apis was fuming in, uh, about this, went off into a dark alleyway and cast um, Pass Without a Trace on them, on themselves, to, uh, to sneak through town without being seen and make it to the, um, the shop of their uh, potential romantic partner, um, Sam, the hunting shop. And once you got there, you realised that Sam was under no immediate threat or per peril. Um, we told Sam that we were going to be leaving town because we didn't feel safe here anymore, and Sam said it's probably for the best. After we left Sam's, we went uh, down the road to the jeweler's shop to see if we could sell, or, or at the very least appraise, some of our jewellery um, so that we can make back some of the money that we'd been robbed of. And when we got there, we realised the jeweler's was under surveillance by the Thieves' Guild, and they saw us coming and said, oh, we thought you might be wanting to come and make back some money. Um, funny how that works, and then they sort of just, just just intimidating us into knowing that they're always around and always watching. Then we left the jewellers after having sold our necklace and appraised the the ring, um, got a bit of gold back in our uh, on our person. We went south of town and talked with the um, the Pen Kempur and Emgolshed, the PEA, about all that we'd known since then and about how, how there's a thieves guild in town and blah blah blah. And, uh, and Polython, the um, elf that runs the elf druid who runs the thieves, uh, the um, uh, druids guild, she said, "Yes, uh, we we're pretty confirmed at this point that there is going to be a dragon in the area. Uh, it's still not a hundred percent. We would like you and Briar, um, one of the other uh, druids, to go and investigate. Especially now that we know that you're particularly stealthy with Pass Without a Trace." So we went back through town. As we arrived at the, the northern gates of the town, we heard the ballistas firing off and, and guards shouting, on the left, on the left, there's two more coming from the right. And uh, and then beating of wings. As the uh, large green dragon circled the town and landed, causing screams and panic throughout everyone in town. And then the green dragon roared loudly that... Uh, you have killed my ch uh, my children. Send out your champion to meet my demands. And so Fondog sent out their champion the in the form of the um, most experienced fighter of the Knights of Kavosna, a lion class um, Knight of Kavosna, a man by the name of Tauchu. And Tauchu arrived, uh, approaching the dragon, with no hostility only to fall into the dragon's trap. Behind Tauchu, the ground erupted as uh, one of the dragon's half-green dragon offspring, um, a green dragon mole, burrowed up from the ground and spewed poisonous gas over Tauchu. That was the signal that the ambush had begun when the forest burst on one side uh, as a half-green dragon boar uh, ran from the forest, spewing more poisonous gas over Tauchu and then goring him with his tusks. Um, and about half a dozen green ra uh, green dragon rats came from the other side of the path, spewing more poisonous uh, breath. And as Tauchu succumbs to most of the, uh, the dragon breath attacks, the final clincher was the dragon itself, launching itself forwards to stand over Tauchu uh, and, and clasp down on him with his draconic claws and yell to the town my demands are this you will send out one of your children with one of your most prized possessions every dusk every dusk until I am satisfied that your debt has been paid and then taking Tao Chu in his jaws he took to the sky and flew off back into the Lannis woods the, the dragon was around the size of a shire horse in the body, but with a longer neck, much longer, sort of more serpentine neck, and a long, garial-like snout, and quite long, thin, almost spindly legs. And at that moment, as the sounds of uh, his beating wings disappear behind the, the forest canopies, The sounds of bells still ringing out around us on the city walls 
the sounds of screaming in the streets echoing behind us rumors are going to start abound people's people's minds and imaginations will run wild and uh, it's likely that there will be all sorts of kerfuffle and uh, possibly rioting in the streets unless the uh, knights can get into action as soon as possible you find yourself standing on top of the um, on top of the northern gate of the town the knights around us start to jump into action to 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 start to consolidate and and uh, understand what's happened try to try to get some sort of a hold of some semblance of of order within the town you can hear people shouting and and uh, running and 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 shouting orders at one another and you stand atop this wall it is it is dawn the sun has barely risen in fact from your location just west of a mountain range uh, the sun would not technically have risen over this town yet uh, the sun is above the horizon as it were but blocked by the mountains so what do you want to do apis what would you do in this moment the start of the day Luckily, being the start of the day, it means that you have, as you can see down there in our berry slots, you've got all four of your first level spells and all two of your second level spells. You have some gold in your pocket, you've got all of the this equipment in your uh, equipment list. What would you like to do? Spira says, the shock is settling in. Lady Andrea says, how do we calm the city? Can Apis run to the hybrids that were hit by the ballista and say in Draconic, I'm here to help, and then muzzle and, and stabilize two of them and take them to the PEA? You absolutely can. Is that, uh, is that what we would like to do? Um, so just to clarify in case you did miss last week, uh, before the dragon attacked um, Tao Chu, it had deliberately sent out a few of its children, a few half-dragon rats, to sort of get close to the town and work out the range of the ballista, the range and accuracy of the ballista, um, by sacrificing a few of its children, and then only after only after like a dozen of the children had been sent out and, and skewered by ballista bolts, did the dragon say, "Okay, they can't they can't reliably hit me from this distance," and then he that's the distance that he landed at outside of the city walls, the town walls, to say, "Come and talk to me." So. From that, we gathered that this dragon is very intelligent, calculating, and also ruthless with regards to its own children, using its own children to learn something about um, the tactics of the enemy, and the strategies and p p capabilities of the enemy. So there are skewered half-dragon rats uh, peppering the, the, the road outside of town. For all we know, some of them could still be alive. We have all our spell slots, so we got no Hunter's Mark on the dragon. Yep, the dragon stayed outside of the range of a Ballista Bolt, so it definitely was outside the range of our Hunter's Marks. Having two hybrids for talking and milking for the PEA could be useful. Uh, yeah, so one of the options that Apis was considering before this dragon attack, uh, one of the sort of preparatory stages, was to try and go and claim one of these hybrids alive so that the, uh, the, the Druid's Guild could be experimenting on the poison glands and seeing if there's some antidote we can come up with for the poison. So it could be that um, could be that some of the hybrids aren't skewered to the path outside are still alive. How well acquainted are we with the Knights of Kvosna? Fairly well. We've had we've had dealings with them. Can we ask them about their plan? Yep. Yeah, but currently, like the the knights that are around you uh, would be squires, um, meaning that they're they're the first rank of the Knights of Kvosna. They're basically towns guards, and a couple of badgers, meaning like the one the one rank up from that, um, the people who are kind of the yeah, just su supervisors to the squires, essentially. Um, no more than towns guards. They wouldn't be the ones making plans. You'd want to speak with Wolverines and Tauchu <laughs> and some of the uh, administrative office. We could ask some of the lower rank knights to secure a hybrid for us while we go talk to the knights. All right, so let's uh, let's put this to a poll. Are we going to prioritize grabbing Tauchu's sword? Prioritize trying to save a living specimen of the hybrids? Are we going to um, to do something in town? Send one of the knights to deal with the hybrids while we go and do something in town, like ask the head of the knights what's going on, and or ask the mayor what's going on, or go to the PEA and ask them what's going on. Run out to the hybrids with 73% of the vote. So three quarters of Apis Mind is saying, get out to that, them hybrids, see if we can find one that is alive, um, see if we can see if we can capture one, what have you. 
we have two muzzles that were designed for uh, the size of something like a um, like a uh, the, the half dragon squirrels that we were seeing. We might be able to fit them on a half dragon rat. They just won't be really designed for that size because the specimen that we'd given to Sam to make the muzzles from was a half dragon squirrel. So uh, Apis, while others are rushing up and down the, the palace walls to try and um, try and get some sort of uh, order in the town um, before people start rioting, Apis runs down the the uh, steps and runs to the the door. The, door, the gate of the, the, the town um, and the gate is being thrown open as about half a dozen um, squires and uh, squires and bad, uh, a couple of badgers rush out uh, of the gates towards the, the path of the um, destruction. There's still a lingering sort of green haze uh, over the area where Tao Chu was and as you approach uh, you can't help but um, have flashes of memory, being that your olfactory senses are so strongly tied to memory. When you smell this acrid sort of burning rubber, poisonous sort of nose crinkling scent that is wafted towards you, it brings you immediately back to the time about nearly four years ago, when you arrived back from the hunt and found this similar lingering green haze hanging over your town of your hometown of Shafkushal. And there found people dead and eyes and veins bulging, vomit and blood around their mouths. You don't let that overcome you um, in the moment though. As you approach the closest um, the closest rat. I'm going to roll a d6 plus 5 to see how many rats there actually how many specimens were actually out there. One. So there's six uh, specimens that are actually still out there, um, skewered by various things. He sent in more than that, but some of them were just obliterated uh, and clearly dead, uh, just like clearly dead without you even having to go to. Um, but there are six possibles. Six, six, uh, six specimens as you're running out, you can see six rats skewered or hurt, injured in some way, um, that actually still have the potential of being alive. And now for each of them, I'm going to roll to see if they are alive. So the first one that you run to is not alive. As you get to it, uh, you can see that it's just like lying there, eyes open, tongue kind of lolling, and it's got a skewer like through the top, uh, top part of... Um, its shoulder that goes pretty much the length of its body and comes out uh, just above where its pelvis would be. You think, nope, that one's not it. Um, you run past that one, um, and you're not quite as fast as uh, the Knights of Kvosna are, um, and being that most uh, a great deal of them are human, um, and you and they have a slightly faster walking speed than you. But you're but you're um, you're shouting out um, to the knights to, to, to uh, don't kill them don't kill them uh, we we we, sh we need to talk to them we need to um, ask them questions interrogate them oh look at that oh technically that's a hundred because it's zero 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 which means no that's that one uh, the next one is also dead um, you make it to the third one that is also dead the fourth one the fourth one however. Uh, the fourth one, as you as you get to it, you can see that the um, skewer has smashed through uh, its um, front left uh, ball and socket joint in the in the in what would be the shoulder of a human, the front leg of uh, a rat. Um, it smashed through that, and it's probably bleeding out, but it hasn't pierced any organs, um, and, uh, and and this this rat is still alive and just sort of panting. You can see as you arrive that the the chest is is. Um, up and down. How big are the rats? They're about the size of a medium-sized dog-ish. They're about the size of a... Uh, so they are they are the offspring of a giant rat and a green dragon. So they're a half green, half green dragon giant rat. Meaning about the size of a, a medium-sized dog or so. Like a small Labrador or a, I don't know, like a bigger than a, bigger than a poodle. Not like a purebred. What's 
Uh, what's a dog about that size? About a Staffordshire Bull Terrier sort of size. So as we approach, we say in Draconic, um, because Apis does speak Draconic, as you can see down there under the languages box. We speak in Draconic saying, uh, it's okay, we're, we're here to help, you're safe now. Uh, you're safe, we're here to help. I'm going to get Apis to roll an animal handling check. This is a, the mind of an animal, but it does speak Draconic, so you're going to have advantage on the roll. Uh, which means I'm going to roll a d20 and add your animal handling check, which is, you can tell that it's we are proficient in it, uh, we're in the skills box there. Proficiency at this level means that we add, add a 3 to the roll. It's also a wisdom based uh, skill, so we add another 2. So we're adding, we're rolling and adding 5. Advantage means we're rolling twice, taking the higher of the two numbers, and then we're adding 5 on it. Uh, 16 plus 5, 21. With a 21 animal handling, <laughs> we approach it, its little beady rat-like eyes see us and then you can see it <laughs> and it starts to like scurry, it's, it, it, it's still, its brain hasn't quite worked out that it's only got one front leg and so it's like trying to trying to scurry and stand and, and you can see that as it does so another spurt of blood um, oozes out. Um, and then it, and then when it realizes it can't run, it starts to breathe in, and you can see that it's get, it's preparing to do a, um, a breath weapon attack. But you speaking to it in Draconic gives it enough time to pause, and, and then it, it sort of has a has a has a look of um, a look of concern, like it's a cornered rat, but a con like a rat that's been cornered by something that it doesn't necessarily think of as a threat right now um with with a high enough roll like that i'll say that you also managed to like convince the uh the other knights around you that um, this one's alive uh, leave it um and they and you can see that a couple of those knights are starting to they're just they've just gone out to pull out the um the ballista bolts and bring them back to town because they can't afford to be losing them if they're about to have a fight with a dragon at some point this Dying rat stalls on its um, on its breath attack at you. It's breathing, but you can see these sort of wispies, wisps of green smoke are leaving its mouth, but not like directed at you. You've managed to get this far. You've you've convinced it to hold off on an attack on you. What do you do now? Heal it. Lot of the cookies says, like cast cure wounds. We do have four slots. Uh, four first level slots and two second level slots. We could do a heal. Uh, we could do a cure wounds. Muzzle it first and then stabilize it. Make sure it doesn't die. Red says don't waste a spell slot on it. All right. So uh, I'm just going to go real quick. Poll. Just a one minute poll. Do we heal it with medicine check? Uh, do we try and stabilize it with a medicine check? Stabilize or heal. Cure wounds means that it will cure its wounds. It will. It will heal over. It won't fix on its. Um, it's it's amputated leg uh, yet yeah, uh, again, but it will cure any sort of um, any sort of bleeding that's happening. It will prevent it from bleeding out. It will regain hit points, um, and it will use up one spell slot, and it'll only take an action to do. A medicine check will save you the spell slot. It will pre uh, it will prevent it from bleeding out to death. But it will be it will mean you getting hands on with it, like staunching something like into the bleeding wound. It's a it's much more it's just basically like the the non magical equivalent. You may be causing the rat some pain to do so, which may may drive it back into a um, a state of um hostility or, or fear. Um if you fail the medicine check you can actually uh well, if you fail the medicine check, it'll keep bleeding, and so it might bleed out by the time you get another chance to try it again. And if you fail by like a nat one on your medicine check, then I usually rule that as you actually made it worse, and it takes a death save, a death fail essentially. So there's risks to it, but the reward is you don't you get to keep your spell slots. So medicine check is a DC ten. You're not proficient in medicine, so it would just be I would roll and add two, and you've got to meet a ten or more to succeed, and staunch the blood. If you fail. If you fail like just under, then no negative effect. If you fail by quite a lot under, then you're probably going to piss off the rat and like hurt it as you try and manipulate it, and it probably turns it back into being hostile. And if you fail by all the way, then it, 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 you may it may even die. You may even make it worse. So 
basically heal with heal without you uh, expending your spell slot has some risk to it but you get to keep your spell slot healing with a spell slot is it removes a lot of that risk um but you're spending a spell slot for it so stabilize or heal with 76 percent of the vote apis decides not to waste a spell slot on this thing and instead try to uh, to to stabilize its wounds by non-magical means so apis um tries to calm it as best as they can as they approach the rat saying we're here to help you you're, you're bleeding a lot um i'm just going to try and i'm just going and you and it's it, it's jumpy and frightened but you approach uh, from the bleeding side and you sort of calmly put your hand out and and try to stroke the back of its neck what are the knights doing well the half a dozen that are out here with you are collecting ballista bolts kuda growing any that are living leaving you with this one and then uh, getting back into town and all the ones that are in the town are trying to deal with the riots and 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 freaking out and panic of the the general populace of this town so it's 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 uh currently not a f friendly animal but it's not hostile either it's it's like a, it's on it's on the verge of indifferent and hostile towards you you sort of try and stroke it you can feel dragon scales under your under your hand as you run them along it's 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 uh it's got a warmth to it that comes from its uh, warm blood. If we lose this rat, no other surviving animals. Um, you didn't focus on telling the knights your plan. That was part of the original um, poll. You focused on getting out there yourself. So, uh, so you sort of you kept the knights away from this one, but this is probably your only chance. You take out a muzzle, thinking that if you do fuck up this um, this this medicine check on it. Um, you're going to muzzle it first. Actually, I'm going to put that to a vote because if you take your first action, this is not an in combat situation, but we're still kind of in the back of my mind thinking about it in turn order. This rat is essentially in mechanics terms on zero hit points. It's not unconscious, but it's on zero. It's it's making death saves essentially. That's what the that's what the blood is symbolizing. It's making death saves. If you take your action to muzzle it, then you'll be more protected in case you fuck up the medicine check. But if you yeah, but if you do so, then it might fail its death saves, and so you're, you're leaving you're leaving it up to, up to um, up to more chance. I'm gonna have to put this one to a poll to get an actual number on it. All right, it's a close call, but with 55% of the vote, Ebis decides not to muzzle it first. Getting close, they see that the bleeding is uh, pretty profuse. And they think in the time it takes to try and muzzle this creature, even with our our soft-spoken draconic trying to um, explain to it why we're doing it and keep it safe, there's a chance that this thing could bleed out and bleed to death before we get around to actually staunching the bleeding. All right, so um, we have uh, we have to make a medicine check now. Uh, I think people tend to prefer this sparkly green gem die rather than the other one because uh, on average it's ten it tends to have rolled better for Apis in the past. So we're going to roll a medicine check. It is a d20 plus our wisdom modifier, and we're not proficient in medicine. We're not using a healer's kit or anything. We're just using whatever's around to try and staunch this blood. So here we go. 16 plus 2 from wisdom is an 18. 18 is, an, is enough. So we have, we've we've managed to staunch this bleeding. How we've done it, uh, I don't know. What have, we got? <laughs> what have we got in our bag that could actually staunch the bleeding? Um... Something from the herbalism kit, maybe. Um, we don't really have. We don't really carry just spare rags, do we? Uh, so there's some. There's some um, the, near nearby where this rat was skewered, right on the edge of the path, off into like the undergrowth. Uh, there's like a large patch of like spongy moss uh, growing on a rock, and we we pop the water out and we clean the clean the wounds off a little bit from our water skin. Pop that back. Uh, and then we grab some of the moss and tear it off and we start to like stuff the moss into the the wounds and we do warn this rat it's it, it, this is gonna this is gonna hurt a little um with an 18 that was high enough uh that the rat doesn't get freaked out doesn't 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 i mean it, it hurts and it freaks out and <laughs> and as it sort of um yelps in pain um there's there's a there's a plume of smoke out in front of it and thankfully you're off to its side so for the, for like five feet space in front of it it basically breath weapons um which dissipates and you can you can kind of smell that acrid smoke uh making its way into your nostrils 
but it does stop the bleeding of the rat. Um, and then we're going to try and muzzle it. So this is going to be another animal handling check, um, just with advantage because we're speaking to it in Draconic about what we're doing. With advantage, animal handling. Hey, look at this, nat 1 or a nat 20. Man, this, uh, there we go, nat 1 or a nat 20. So with advantage, thankfully, not disadvantage, we get a nat 20 plus 5 on our animal handling check. We get out one of these muzzles that was, uh, again, designed for a smaller muzzle, uh, the, the face of a, um, a squirrel, not a giant rat. But we managed to sort of, like, we get our hunter's knife out and we see where it's kind of what's the restricting size part of it and we we just cut that one part so that it opens up a little bit further it's like kind of netting or webbing almost so if we cut the outer ring of it it'll be it'll open up a little further with the webbing and we slip it over we explain to it ca as calmly as we can in draconic um what we're doing and why why this will keep it safe because people will not be as threatened about it and things and we managed to attach it around the back of its head and pull it tight <laughs> And then the, we, we look up to see that there is a knight uh, watching us do this. Um, let's see, which knight is it going to be? Let's roll at random on my list of knights. Who's out there with us? One, two, three, four. Out of you four badgers. It's a, a youngish female uh, human. Um, maybe a woman in her 20s or so. And she's standing there, she's got um, the bracer on her left hand, and she's got the um, blue cloak on uh, 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 adorning her shoulders, which uh, signifies that she's of the badger rank. And she says, um, what, why, what, are you, what are you doing? Why, why, are you, why are you saving this thing, these things who are going to attack us? You see, if, if we take it to the... And you're talking common, obviously, and hoping the dragon rat won't understand you now. Um, you see, if we capture it alive, we can learn about the dragon. We can. I, I, I was speaking with the PEA. Um, I'm working with them to try and capture one alive so that they can work on an antidote to the poison that it breathes. Uh, we, if it's some way of immunizing us against it or something like that. We, we need one to study its poison. The Arcanist's Entente may be able to help us as well. She says, right, yeah, that's, that's a smart idea. Um, and then she comes down and, and puts her hands under the body of this rat and <laughs> helps you lift it up. Know thy enemy and all that. She says, "Right, uh, right. That's a, that's a smart idea. It also might know information about its parent, if you know what I mean." And she says, "Smart. You 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 were speaking to it before. Is that do you speak the dragon language?" You say, "I I do. Yes, I, I've I've studied it." Um, she says, "That's useful." Um, okay. Um, you're the you're the you're the ranger that people were talking about, right? You see, I, I, I guess maybe I, I, I'm. And she says you're from outsider. You're, you're, you're the outsider who uh, first brought in the dead ones. You say yes. She says I'm. Was it um, as you're walking with her uh, and the rat back towards the, the town? She says, "Were you the one? It, were you the one it wanted? Were you the one it was talking about?" Yes. Right. You walk the rest of the way back to the town in um, in uh, in silence. Uh, can we look to see if the rat's reacting to what we're saying in common? Uh, yes, you can. Um, your animal handling is uh, your passive animal handling is enough to know that it it hasn't been reacting to. Um, it hasn't been reacting to anything you've been saying in common. It's it's just been sort of like on the verge of passing out because of the pain and blood loss. As you arrive <clears throat> back towards the the town um, gate, you you two are the last ones in. Um, and as you uh, as you move through the gate, uh, the, there's some knights move to quickly close the gates behind you. And you see, I'm so sorry for what happened. I'll do everything in my power to make up for it. She says, make up for it. <clears throat> and you gather that she's she's not she's not got the headspace to 
to have a sort of cohesive discussion about this right now. <clears throat> we should um, chat more uh, once I've delivered this to the PEA. Uh, we need to we need to deliver this rat to the PEA while it's alive. Insight check to see if she's mad at us. All right, let's roll an insight check. Uh, with a 16, 16 plus two insight, 18. With an 18, it does seem that way. Yeah, you gather from her, she she's trying to compose herself as a position of authority, as someone who is trained enough to get up to the badger rank of the, the um, Knights of Glavosna. She is wearing the uniform, she is uh, representing the knights, and so she doesn't want to be unprofessional um, about her conduct towards you, but you can tell that she's biting her tongue about her response to finding out that you were the one that the dragon wanted, and instead it has killed Tauchu, or at least taken Tauchu. Can I, um, can, can, can you or someone please escort me to the PEA to ensure nobody attacks us on the way? We need to make sure that this rat makes it safe. She says, yes, I'll get someone to, and she, uh, you, um, and she points to one of the other knights and says, come, um, escort, escort this, um, uh, this dwarf to the, the, uh, PEA south of town. We need to get this rat to them so they can study it and uh, you look around to see who she's pointing to and it's a, um, a rather handsome half uh, elf uh, half elf knight of Kvasna called Joey and Joey comes over and says uh, yes right away and so he comes with you walks through th through the town we can't take Tauchu's responsibility away either though I don't think he would have let us go out that is a that is a very good point he did he did snap at somebody on uh, on the gate who wanted to come with him and said no uh, if if anybody is this town's champion it's me um i go alone so as you um as you and joey walk through the town you can see that it is carnage the town is in upheaval there there are there are people screaming and people crying and and and, and other people running around shouting names of of lost f folk to try and see if anybody's there and um, and, and there are other people hysterically shouting about how oh, it stinks, it's so much it's so, oh my god, I'm poisoned, I, can feel, I can't breathe, I can't breathe and you, you didn't even breathe breathe on the town, you stupid wench I can't, ah, just, just hysteria all over um, and there, and what few knights this town actually has are running around there, trying their best to be like calm down, everybody back to your houses, back to your houses, lock yourselves in uh, blah blah blah, just, do, just doing what they can um, you and Joey, uh, Joey is smart enough to suggest that perhaps he, um, perhaps you, you don't walk through town with a, a half dragon rat under your arm, um, while you're heading into, uh, to, to the south end of town. <clears throat> and so he quickly grabs off of a nearby cart, um, just a small blanket that was covering a, a box of apples and he, he sticks it over the top of the rat and, and takes it from you under his arm. As you uh, walk, you say, "Look, look. I, um, if I'd have known that it wanted me, I would have, I would have, I would have volunteered to go." And Joey says, "I, uh, Tauchu would never have um, let you go. Tauchu was, Tauchu was the face of, of Fondurg, is the face of Fondurg. Um We cannot give up, up hope that he's alive. Um, from what I understand about dragons, they prefer to put fear in people and." Killing him would not be as useful as, as keeping him alive as a as a, a bargaining chip. We can still hold on to the hope that he's alive. And don't beat yourself up about it. Um, the dragon could have taken any one of us. People need to be calmed as well. Although it should be the work of the knights and mayor. Yeah, yeah, people are the knights are trying to trying their best to do that job. So glad that Joey has brains as well as good looks. Yeah, he's uh, he's a smart guy. The rumours before we got here, and we've done more in a few days than they did at all. That is true. So, um, you make it to the the bottom edge of town, um, and Joey says um, to the guards on duty, um, "We need to we need to head out to the PEA." And the guards say, "No can do. Uh, orders to unlock. Uh, orders to keep the the gates locked up." 
And Joe says, no, um, we have something that we need to get to the PEA. And he pulls back the blanket, showing off the wrap that's kind of like looking round. And, uh, right, uh, open up, quick. And they unlock the door for you, unlock the gate, and, and let you and uh, let you and Joey out of um, out of the, the town. And then quickly, <coughs> put the bar back over the gate again. You walk to what, uh, about... The kilometre or so, the 10 minute walk um, from town to the PEA, you make it in about eight minutes with you both kind of putting on a hustle. And uh, walking past the farms and uh, and and other sort of um, out of out of, out of town um, businesses, you eventually make it to the greenhouse <coughs> that, that doubles as their place of worship uh, to the, um, the, the gods of nature and, and farming and such. You find that um, you are met about a few hundred feet from the um, from the greenhouse proper. You're met with like uh, four or five different. Um, oh, and Briar's with you as well. Remembering, I just rem- just remind remembered now that Briar was Briar was going with you at the end of last session, so she would have come with you uh, during this session as well. <coughs> so Briar's also also uh, with you and. Uh, you and Briar and Joey are together walking back towards the greenhouse, and you're met by four of the um, the people that you've seen around the, the greenhouse: Polython, um, the one that you know to be called Charlie, and the one that you know to be called Mark, um, and then another one that you haven't introduced yourself to or know the name of yet. Um, but she is a, a wood elf by the looks of her. Where was Mel? What was she doing during the attack? She was she was with you up on the wall, um, not not sure what to do during the attack, so she was just kind of watching. If in doubt, Mel's just kind of following you along. She's like a like a like a hunting dog essentially. She's just always kind of one step behind you, just buzzing, buzzing up here. Buzz. As you um, as you uh, approach, Polython steps forward and says, um, "Is it true? We 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 heard, we've just heard notice that um, that the dragon attacked." And Joey says, "Yeah, I'm afraid it is true. Yes." <clears throat> Excuse me. He says, yes, I'm afraid it is true. Um, he did not attack the town, but he said he landed out uh, to the north of town and uh, gave demands. He said that we had wronged him and in order to make, set it right, we were to deliver a treasure every uh, dusk. And she looks and says, a, a treasure? He says, yes, a treasure and a person. And then a look of that makes more sense comes across Polython like oh yeah that makes like she goes right and somebody died and he says un unconfirmed at this stage but he, his chances of survival are unlikely and she looks she looks across sees Apis sees uh, Joey. Mel and Briar, and says, Tao Chu? And uh, her hands go to her face, and there's sort of like an audible gasp from the other wood elf. Um, and the other two kind of cover their faces as well, just like, oh shit. We have brought you at your request. And he um, sh- uh, flicks back the, the, the covering once more. And we see the, um, the the green dragon rat there, still like f- kind of freaking out now. Say so it's not in a good way. It's um, bleeding out from its uh, front paw, but we've managed to staunch the bleeding. And uh, and Polython steps forward, and uh, and Charlie, who is uh, also a Briden, a Briden, Briden being uh, the name in my world for a half human, half elf like Joey is. Um, Charlie steps forward. And takes the t- uh, t- uh, him and Polython take the um, the wrap from Joey. And uh, Polython says, uh, "Take it inside. Um, find us find a surface to uh, to place it on. Try and keep it sterile." Um, uh, she s- turns and speaks to Charlie in Elvish, uh, which you don't understand. Um, but she, it it's just like instruction. You can tell. And he, he sort of nods uh, his, his understanding and heads inside the um, heads back towards the greenhouse with this rat. She says, um, "Thank you for, for bringing me this. It will be useful. I think um, we'll be able to we'll be able to um, 
keep this threat uh, on our side and if it has useful information um, perhaps we will learn it uh, you uh, you uh, you speak the dragon language do you not tape us you say i do he says uh, i don't believe anybody anyone in our um you know a, a volunteer group speaks draconic so if you wouldn't mind helping us to translate while we study this creature it would be useful um and then she turns to joey and says what what now what what is the plan are we going after it Joey says, no plans yet. Uh, in situations like this, the mayor will usually arrange some sort of emergency meeting, I imagine. Um, the higher-ups within the knights and probably yourself will be asked to attend. Um, and as you, uh, as he's saying this, there's a there's footsteps running from uh, the other end of um, uh, sort of the direction you came. And you turn around and you can see that there's um, a knight of Kvosna, um not wearing any adornments or anything, not even the bracer. Um, but you, but you know that it's a knight um, because you've seen her before. Uh, she's a 15-year-old uh, girl called Cassandra who works the reception of the Knights of Kavosna. As uh, she is running like Billy, or she's she's like sprinting down towards you. And Joey says, um, "Calm yourself, uh, Cassandra. What is what is it? What is it?" And Paulson says, um, uh, uh, "Are you okay? Is everything? Are you hurt?" And starts running towards Cassandra as well. And uh, as Cassandra gets close, she says, "Just bring, just bring, just bring in a mess message from the mayor that you're summoned to come to a meeting as soon as possible. So summon a meeting. Just Polythen, right?" And she says, "Yes, I'm, I'm Polythen. Are you okay? Yes, I'm just um, coming to a meeting." The mayor is arranging a, an emergency meeting that uh, requires your requires your attention. Um, Polythen, you you are to attend attend a meeting if you can bring anyone, so, so, a, a, a friend, a colleague, somebody you, you trust to be at the meeting with you. Um, yeah, we, you're needed. To, the mayor will be to, talking as soon as possible, as soon as you arrive. And Cassandra says, uh, uh, Polythen says, yes, yes, of course. Um, come, 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 and uh, takes Cassandra. Um, and and just sort of prestidigitates some sort of fresh air in front of them. Just a nice sort of gentle breeze across the face and gust cantrips to just kind of cool it down a little bit. As the as the rat is taken off to the um, the the greenhouse to study, and the and um, the other three druids head off to the greenhouse as well. Um, Sorry, the other two. So Charlie, Mark, and uh, the lady you haven't introduced yourself to yet. They head off to the greenhouse, and Polythen says, uh, "Right, well, it sounds like I should uh, I should be going. Apis, you should definitely come along. Um, uh, Briar, you should probably come as my second as well. Um, let's let's no time to waste then." And she starts strolling off towards the town. What do you guys want to do? Do you want to go uh, towards the greenhouse, or go go with them towards the town? Go with them, find out what the plan is, go to the meeting, go with her, go to the council, go to the town. Okay, pretty much unanimous, I think. Um, we set off after them as well. Um, was Kelso the only one going to say... <laughs> Kelso was the only one saying, like, let's interrogate the rat to find information for the council. Fred, not you're out outgunned in Apis's mind. The the thought crosses Apis's mind of, like, if we talk to the rat, we might be able to learn information that's good for the council. But by this point, Polythen, Briar... Uh, and Joey are all, and Cassandra are all walking back towards the um, the town anyway. Uh, so you think, uh, oh, sorry, and you disappear towards the town as well. The rat needs some heals. There's um, there's druids amongst them. They will they will heal the rat. You make it uh, your way back to the town, and as you approach, the the gates are unbarred and opened up, and you make your way into the town, shuttered back up again. There is a lot left. There's still. There's still um, disruption in the streets, but it's not carnage or uh, outright riots or upheaval or anything. It seems like the knights, the, the squires and the badgers have managed to sort of calm the, the, the town for the most part, like dispersed the majority of people back towards their individual houses and the knights are on the streets talking and you can you can overhear snippets of conversations like... Uh, we'll let you know when we know more. We're, there's there's a meeting happening immediately. That the the mayor and the heads of the uh, they're going to be this and that. And there's just less there's less um, fighting of the knights right now. 
It's not even clear that the rat can speak draconic in order to tell us anything. We know it understands, but haven't heard it speak, correct? And even if it does speak, it's no guarantee that we'll be, it would betray its father and tell us anything anyway. Yeah, there's no bar guarantee right now. Oh, the rat doesn't go berserk without us there. <laughs> yeah, thankfully you've left it with a faction of druids and rangers who tend to be very good at handling animals, especially ones, ones that are on death's door and um, muzzled. <laughs> so I think they'll manage. So we make our way with uh, with Joey and Polython sort of mostly leading the way, uh, Cassandra and Briar and us following. Um, we make our way to the uh, the mayor, the town hall in the more centre of town, an area of the town we've not really had reason to go to yet. And there we see there is much more, uh, m many more people out. And it's more of a an, uh, an angry kind of, it's not really an angry mob yet, but if 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 not helped in the right way, uh, it could turn into that. Uh, there's a lot of people gathered demanding answers of what's going on. And this is where the majority of the knights have been filtered to, to try and like keep people out of the town hall. Um, as soon as people have started hearing that there's going to be an emergency meeting, it seems like people have gone to where the meeting is going to be to demand answers. What's happening? How are you going to keep us safe? There's all sorts of shouts about... Um, uh, you said that you said when you were elected that you'd keep us safe from the the beasts of the forest and blah blah blah. Uh, wasn't the wall meant to keep us safe? What use is a wall to a creature that can fly? Blah 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 blah. Why don't we have enough knights of Kavosna? Yada yada yada. Where's where's our tax paying money going going to if it's not going to paying the more knights? Well, lots of just angry shouting and like uh, demanding answers. The knights that are there let us pass. Um, and we make our way up the steps of the town hall and in through the front doors. We don't know the situation we're going into. Can we listen and wait? We shouldn't talk when we don't know what we're walking into. Yeah. So we walk in um, and uh, we are led through the um, entrance foyer uh, past, the, <laughs> past the, the, the receptionist who is mute and fingerless. <laughs> oh, wait, no, I don't need to make them that way because in this campaign, you know... <laughs> You're not absolute crazies about interrogating my NPCs for all of their details. Uh, so there's sort of a receptionist in the in the entrance hall, and you uh, you, you make your way past them, uh, and uh, as she recognises Polython and probably Joey as well, um, and definitely Cassandra. Uh, yeah, probably Cassandra. So she she recognises them and and uh, waves you in. And you can, as soon as the doors open, um, there's a couple of knights, a couple of squires on duty of the doors who open and, and let you let, let you in. And as soon as the doors open, you can hear that there's quite a lot of hubbub inside. Uh, can, we, can we go and talk to her and ask her a life story? <laughs> What's your favourite fear, though? <laughs> we can be like that if you want us to. No, I'd rather not. <laughs> What's the great receptionist's greatest fear? Being attacked by a green dragon, I guess. <laughs> Before she's even had a morning coffee. You head inside of the hubbub town hall uh, meeting room, and you can see that um, that sitting there uh, on a on a level with you, it's uh, there's no like raised plinth and there's no like tiered seating. It's just a relatively small meeting hall. Um, on one side of a long table, at one end of a long table, is um, a, a rather large chair with sort of an ornate um, wooden back to it, with sort of sim uh, swirls and symbols across the top of it. And sitting in this chair, kind of dwarfed by the size of the chair, is a stout halfling. And you don't recognise him. <laughs> he is not. Uh, he is not the fiend. So you don't need to. <laughs> I know a few people were like, "Oh God, what if the fiend is the mayor?" He's not. Um, I'll make a. I'll make a perception check. Actually, is it passive? Let's have a look. You see him. You see him as there's enough of Apis's mind that was worried that the mayor was a uh, was going to be the fiend. So I will make a perception check on him, on his face as you walk in. Oop, I didn't roll it in the tray for some reason, but that was a nat twenty. With a twenty five on perception, there is definitely a resemblance to the fiend. You can tell definitively that it's not. They have the uh, different hairstyle. They kind of uh, got receding hair and uh, sort of lighter and patchy. patchy. Um, and they've got a, a, a sort of a goatee beard that's uh, that's flecked with uh, flecked with grey. And so there is like a, a fam familial resemblance, but definitely not the same person. Um, you wouldn't be at all surprised if the fiend was related to this uh, mare, though. Having said that, you're not super familiar with hobbits, uh, so it could also be that you're being 
a little bit gen generalizing of, of uh, hobbits looking the same, perhaps. Uh, he's sitting at one end of the table. Around the table are, um, you can see a, a gnome that you recognize, um, Pertrin Diddle Jibsworth Leon Findlesmith Gregory Smacklebomb, a, a male rock gnome who uh, works for the Knights of Kavosna. He is a rock gnome with a, um, a silvery uh, cape, a greyish silver cape on, the, on his shoulders. Uh, he's sitting on the side, on the uh, left hand side of the mare. You can also see that there are two other um, knights in the room. Um, they are both wearing blue, cl uh, blue, uh, sorry, red capes, signifying that they are the Wolverine rank, um, the rank above Badger. There is a female high elf and another rock gnome, and they're sitting sort of opposite uh, Pertrin. So there's it's the mare uh, sandwiched between two Wolverine classes and uh, and Pertrin. Uh, Polython is now here, obviously. And you can see that Vala is here. Vala is a wizard, um, a wizard slash artificer that you've uh, that you've met that um, uh, that works for the Arcanist's Entente. Uh, she's a human woman um, who is in her older age, maybe late forties or so. Uh, Vala, V E uh, V A L A, Vala. There is also another woman there that you don't recognize um, sitting next to Vala, who is a female and she's very sh short in nature and a little bit stout. Um, not quite as short as a hobbit, but you can... Uh, let's make a... I'll use the same perception check because that's the perception check of you kind of like looking over the room, I guess. Um, you you wouldn't be surprised if she was a hobbledehoy. Uh, hobbledehoy is um, uh, the name for a half hobbit, half human. Uh, who else would be there? Mm -mm -mm. Anybody else there at the moment? I don't believe anybody. There's probably a couple of people there that you don't recognize. Probably, um, yeah, there'd be a couple of people there that you, you wouldn't recognize. Um, but they wouldn't be sitting at the table. They're just kind of like s standing around. Um, so as you uh, walk in, the, the mayor looks up and says, um, uh, what's the accent of a hobbit? Work on my nervous dear. This is, um, ah, Polython, uh, good to see that you made it in good time. Thank you for that, um, young lady. Uh, you, you can, you can go now, um, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, who's, who, who, who are we speaking with here? I'm just going to roll to see if he recognizes Joey. I don't think he would. No. This is, uh, sir. And Joey says, um, uh, my name's Joey, sir. I, I'm a uh, knight of Kvosna. He says, right you are, and he, he turns to kind of like glance at the other knights there at the table, and uh, one of them kind of half shakes her, her head, and he says, um, thank you for escorting uh, Miss Polython. Uh, you're free to attend to duties outside, if you wouldn't mind. I'm sure they've they've got a lot of um, a lot of things that you can be doing uh, right now. So he, he kind of dismisses him uh, right away, sir, and he turns and leaves the room. And then he looks at you and says, and you are? And Bertrand says, Ah, uh, he should stay. Uh, they should stay, sorry. Um, uh, that's Apis Hive, the one that... And, and he says, Oh, that's... But it's a pleasure to meet you, uh, Apis. Uh, under better circumstances, it would be a more preferable situation, but please have a seat. And so you make your way to the table. Um, <clears throat> Mel would have been waiting outside. She, know, she knows when you go into places of business like this, usually she, she hangs about on the roof. So Mel would have settled on the eaves outside of the uh, the town hall. Would he recognise Briar? He would recognise Briar. He says, um, oh, Briar, please uh, have a seat. How, how are you, my dear? He says, um, I, I've, I've been better, um, you know, better circumstances, but um, but I'm okay in myself. He says, right you are. Well, have a seat, my dear. Uh, let's get this underway, shall we? Um, just for your all, uh, for your, <clears throat> your... Um, just for your uh, understanding, this here is Tammy. Um, Tammy is the head of the um, Artisanal Alliance. Uh, she'll be our our uh, understand. Uh, she'll be the one who will uh, relay to the various shops and businesses of the town. Uh, T A W M Y. Um, she'll be the one to relay to the various shops and businesses of the town through the Ar uh, Artisanal Alliance. Um, 
what we decide here today. Uh, with us also is a, um, a stenographer, uh, a, a scriber, um, scrivener from the uh, Brush and Quill uh, faction who will uh, be writing down and documenting what is decided here today. I'm surprised that we rank highly enough to warrant a place at the table rather than in the crowd. Uh, it's not surprising given you, that you were specifically called for by the the, uh, the dragon. So, um, what does Apis feel like doing in this moment? Are you going to speak up or are you more of like I'll sit and listen sort of a, a frame of mind? What are you guys feeling? Is there anything you want to get out there soon? I, before we start, I just want it to be known. Blah, 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 blah. Or is it just like, see what they say first? All right. <clears throat> so Apis is pretty much pretty much unanimous here about um, deciding to just listen. They're, they're, they're not the one in authority right now. They have things to offer to the conversation, but they want to wait for the mayor to sort of kick it off and things first. So the mayor does so. The mayor kicks it off with... Right. Uh, let me first start by saying it's uh, terrible what happened to Tochu, of course. Um, of course, he will be missed and we will have the appropriate uh, funeral recommend... Uh, funeral proceedings for Tochu uh, when the time is right. As for, um, in fact, before he even goes any further, he's immediately cut off by one of the um, one of the knights at the table who says, um, it's the uh, rock gnome who says, so are we, are we writing him off as, as dead then? And the mess is, uh, from what I understand, he was, he was killed uh, in sight. And um, and the rock gnome says, um, "Well, I mean, he's he's a pretty hardy guy. We we he can he can withstand a lot. He might have just been knocked out. Uh, the dragon might keep him keep him alive for a bargaining chip." He says, yeah, "Well, he might, but what what are we are we thinking? That's the the likelihood." Um, and Persian says, um, "I mean, I I I wouldn't think it likely. I wouldn't put our hopes on it." says right well then one of the um one of the the plans on the cards should be a consideration of whether or not it's right to uh to create a potential rescue mission for totu totu then he, he sort of puts that that put that puts that aside to be like we'll talk about that <clears throat> and then continues and says the next thing of course on the cards is discussion on this uh champion that it was referring to. I am understanding that this champion may well be referring to yourself. Uh, um, what was it again? And Petra says, uh, Apis. Apis. Uh, I understand that this this might be re relating to you. Is that news to you? Or are you aware that this dragon may have been having you in mind when uh, when we sent out Tochu? What do you say? You're being directly directly addressed. I, I, uh, I learned that at the same time everyone else did um, and if I knew that it wanted me I, I would have gone out instead I'm, I'm so so sorry and the mayor says uh, we're not blaming you son uh, we're just saying um, it's unfortunate and it's information that we need to know what is your dealings with this dragon in the past and you say it, it only became clear when uh, once the dragon sm spoke. Um, I'm, I'm not. I, I have no dealings with the dragon directly, but um, I have encountered its children, and so you get them up to up to date. To their credit, everyone around the table sits and listens, and the scrivener um, is just scratching away, and that's the only other sort of sound of coming from the room as it happens. And once you're finished, the mess is right. Well, seems like. You are indeed the one that it was referring to, but anyone in your shoes would have done the same thing. Any of the any of the uh, knights of Kavasna in your position would have done the same. Am I right? And the Wolverines both nod and he says, "You're right to do what you did, uh, and right to head out and try and find information on them. So uh, I need you to know that we don't blame you for for what's happening." However, that said, it's important information I'm glad that you've told me um, it may be that until I am satisfied may be referring to until they have taken you we are unclear right now as to whether the dragon will be aware that Tauchu was not in fact responsible 
but could you identify the giant boar that attacked as the same one that you had attacked previously? And you say, aye, it had the same scars on its face and uh, fresh wounds from the arrows that I'd shot at it. So, and when you fought it, did it seem to be intelligent? Intelligent enough to speak, aye? Uh, it seemed to know what we were there for and spoke to us in Draconic and uh, put a chase to us. It was it was smart enough. It had the probably had the mind of a boar, but... Um, Probably had the mind of a boar, but at the same time it was cunning like a dragon. That's what I was afraid of. You see, if the boar knew who you were, then there's a very good chance that when it gets back to the lair of the dragon, it is able to explain to the dragon that this is this this captive that he has taken is not in fact the champion of the town, or by his words, the champion. And so I worry that he will come back and demand you. That's uh, something that we should take into account. Is there anything I can do to help? Uh, all in due time, yes. We need to decide on a plan of attack because if it's uh, it, it demanded to be paid at dusk, uh, correct? And Petra nods and the knights nod. In that case, we have possibly eight hours to decide what to do before we lose the light. Ideas are welcome. And he sort of sets, sets, sets it out to the table to talk. Um, the the uh, Vala puts a hand up first and he says, Vala, um, for anyone who doesn't know, uh, this is this is Vala uh, from the um, Arcanist D'Entente. Uh, head of the Arcanists here in Fondurg. So Vala says, thank you very much. I I propose that we try and, or at the very least it is an option to put on the table, that we try to trick this dragon. We use the time to set up an ambush. We use an illusion to make the uh, dragon fe seem like it's getting some sort of sacrifice. And when it goes to attack the person who is holding the treasure, only then do they discover it's an illusion, by which time we spring the trap. Um, the the wolverines are both kind of like visibly scoffing at this, and uh, not scoffing, but like uh, rebutting. Um, before they let her finish. But as soon as she sort of gets to that end, Mac, one of them, the high elf, um, says... No, um, absolutely not. I, 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 I propose that that would be a very risky dan uh, danger to the town. Um, if setting up an ambush uh, in such a way, will the dragon will see through it and, and see it as a, a slight on his intellect and intelligence, his wit and cunning. He will have a trap already laid out for us, like like this morning, and, uh, and the, he will not simply walk into a trap that is simple illusions. Um, at which point the uh, hobbledy hoy speaks up and says, uh, "My my illusions aren't simple. I'd, I'd be able to very complicated. Uh, I'd be able to create a a, a, a uh, illusion that's indecipherable from from uh, indistinguishable from from a regular person walking out there." Says, "I'm I'm not I'm not uh, slighting your abilities. I'm sl I'm I'm commending a dragon's ability to see through nonsense. Uh, I don't believe it would work. Is what I'm saying." And what do you propose? I propose an all-out attack. We strike now a counter-attack, he won't be expecting it. We get to put together people as uh, quickly as we can and we go out there and take the fight to him. You, you propose taking a fight out to a dragon's lair in the middle of a forest, uh, fighting on his turf, in, on his turf under his terms? It's not under his terms though. Uh, he's, he's lost a great deal of his offspring right now. The rest of them won't be ready for an attack. He won't be expecting an onslaught. He won't be ready for an onslaught. Um, so that's two of the plans that have been put out there um counter attack right now as soon as possible um wait until tonight to set some sort of a trap for him when he comes to collect his um his his gift for the day then the um the woman from the um Artis artisanal alliance speaks up and says why does it need to be? Uh, why does it need to be uh, uh, um, uh, an illusion or anything? Why don't Why don't we just live by his terms? He's not. He's. he's he didn't attack the town when he could have. He, he, we just send somebody out there, and and he'll leave us alone. And the knights say, "All due respect, you're not at the table." And uh, the the mayor says, 
No, no, no. She's invited into the room. She's part of the meeting. Your your opinion is valid, and you're speaking for the people, and I'm sure the people will be asking the same thing. Please, continue. And she says, The dragon will leave us alone if we if we just d- meet its demands. It made demands, and we should meet them. And the knight, the, who didn't speak up just before, says, um, No, that's... that's uh, I'll do respect. Dragons don't work that way. You cave into them once, you, sh- you show subservience, and they will they will use it. The, the, that dragon will never be satisfied. We will we will lose a person from our town every single day until we have nobody left. She says, there's criminals out there. There are people, I got mugged just last night. There are criminals out there who, deserved, who deserve it. We could send them out. And, you, and you're going to play God, are you, and decide which of us deserves to die to a dragon? I I think it's I think it's very clear who's who deserves to the and the and you can tell that the tensions in the room are starting to like escalate now. The mayor tries his best. No no no. Let's let's uh, keep this uh, civil, shall we? Basically, to cut a long meeting short, the things that are proposed, we make an illusion uh, that takes the treasure out to them, and then that is the trigger of a trap. We. Uh, so there, there comes to be like a compromise between those uh, the ideas there in that we don't make an illusion we send somebody real out there some someone like yourself or a proficient fighter someone like one of these wolverines we send out um, a proficient fighter to deal with the trap uh, to deal with it and they are ready for it to be a trap and so they spring the trap and attack the, the dragon when he comes to collect we send out somebody real somebody who, um, who the, the town decides through one means or another and during the course of the meeting, it is said that we do have two people on death row at the moment uh, under the Knights of Kvosna, two people who are um, due to be hanged for their crimes. It says we could do that. It would save us two days to send out people who are um, who are due to die anyway. Um, another option is that we go out there and counterattack them now. Another option is that we just send, like, the two different counterattack options is like an all-out assault or like a sneak attack assassination attempt so that it's less obvious that we're coming, but like a small group goes out to try and like just get in, kill them and get out, and we leave the um, half-dragons without a dragon to um, unify them. Do we know if it's an old dragon, young dragon? So Polython speaks up about that and says, uh, I didn't see it myself, but uh, if we, if, if, the descriptions I've uh, received from them during this meeting, um, it seems that it would be a young dragon. It had darker olive green skin. Uh, it was only about the size of a large horse. Uh, ancient dragons will get to significantly larger than that. It seems like, for me, it would probably be, um, from the descriptions I was given, it would probably be under 150 years old, meaning it's rather young and, and wants to establish a, um, a territory for itself. It would also that would also fit in with the fact that it has recently arrived in our area. It's probably been kicked out of its nest uh, now that it's reaching adulthood by whomever uh, whomever got this uh, whomever this this dragon was uh, sired by has probably kicked it out. Um, those I think from the people present, the mayor, the knights, the arcanists. Oh, there's also the talk of poison, and Polython talks about the um, the attempt, the decision that we were going to be making to try and um, try and create a an infertility poison. Uh, that that option comes up, but is quickly dismissed by um, the arcanists as being something that would take weeks to work on. Uh, by which time we would have to appease the dragon in the meantime by actually sending out people to die. Yeah, so we'd have to we'd have to be sending out people to actually die every dusk until the the poison is po- potentially worked on, and then once it is worked on, we'd have to like lace somebody with this poison if in, if indeed that person is even being eaten by the dragon, which we don't know for sure. Then if it works, the dragon might be infertile at that point, but then we've still got years to wait until all of his current army are dead and he can't create any more, and then we can move on and attack him before he leaves the leaves the area and so the, the uh, arcanists quickly dismiss that as an option because they say that our fo- uh, our focus would be on something more important than that when the topic of raids come up we say um i'm not sure an ambush would work at all you saw how many half dragons there were there's probably more out there right now watching to see what we do if we tried setting up an ambush and there are half dragons watching that plan would unravel immediately and um the knights agree with that but the um there's a little pushback from the uh, hobbledehoy who seems from her discussion, it seems like she's an illusion wizard, 
um, and she says that she'd be able to disguise this, she'd be able to uh, put these things into place to to try and help out, and uh, and there's a little bit of hesitance from Vala when she's talking about that, as if maybe she doesn't fully distrust like her abilities to do every, to to deliver everything she's promising. Using the two people on death row to plan better and prepare better to see if there are any cursed items that can be sent as the treasures may be worthwhile. If we if we can buy ourselves two days by um, by sending out as a we can send out as as a sacrifice the two people on death row. It will it will buy us two days to better plan and see what happens uh, if we can send out cursed items maybe. How intelligent and wise, on average, is the young green dragon? Let's find out, Danielle. You, as a ranger, have advantage, with, with dragons being your favourite enemy, you have an advantage on recalling information and lore about them. You also have a plus three intelligence, uh, so a history check will be this plus three. You've got uh, 19, 19 plus three. With 22, you know that green dragons, from his, from stories and, and what have you, you know that green dragons are particularly cunning and um, and intelligent. They like to plan. You've seen that in action now, after him sending out his children to die, just so you can see what the range of the uh, ballistas are, and uh, and how far they can reliably hit, and then land beyond that, so that you are um, so that he is safe. And so you 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 you. Um, you're familiar with the fact that green dragons are intelligent. Uh, as wisdom goes, like the, the stat wisdom, like how perceptive are they, how good at reading people's lies and things, you imagine that they're probably pretty good at inciting whether or not you're lying to them because they spend their life lying to others. Can we suggest a joint fighting force? Yes, you can, yes. Yeah. So um, you speak up at the table and say, if we go on this attack, we need a, a joint fighting force. We need to be on uh, front together. All of this infighting that you're doing right here in the room, when we go out and start to speak into our respective uh, peoples, the, the knights under your command and the the uh, the shopkeeper is the, the you're 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 um, in charge of keeping this uh, the town informed. Uh, the arcanists, every, everyone, you're you're all going back to your people and you're going to be um, telling them what we've spoken about in this meeting today and the plan going forward. We need to be unified as a town. We need to fight against the one enemy that's actually out there. Um, we need to have a joint fighting force if we're going to approach this in any way, whatever way we choose to, to approach this, it needs to be unified. Um, if we fight it, we need to have the knights on board, we need to have the arcanists on board, we need to have the druids and rangers of the PEA on board. And everybody agrees on that after some sort of reluctant sort of murmuring and mumbling. We shouldn't pander to the dragon, the knights said it wouldn't help. That is true. We could cast Hunter's Mark on the healed half dragon rat, release it, follow it from a distance to find the lair. That is a uh, so that's a good plan that has not been um, uh, spoken yet. Um, Polython starts to tell, talk about how we've got a live rat that we're going to be studying for poisons and to see if the, see if we can have any sort of antidote. And then on the back of that, you say, if we were to heal that rat, um, I have a way of tracking it, like not just not just because I'm a good tracker, but like magically tracking it. Um, I could I could track it magically, uh, send it back to its lair, and that will help us get information on where where uh, where the terrain is and better knowledge from it. And there's sort of a moment of pause among them, and the the knights both agree that would be a good idea. Um, Briar also says that 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 would work. It would def it would definitely help uh, rats. And she speaks up about her knowledge of animals is finally coming in useful for the um, for the discussion, and she says. That would work. She, uh, rats tend to uh, want to scurry back to the place where they felt safe last, and it would definitely go back towards its father and um, towards its towards its uh, family. Um, if we were to release release it, it would try and get back to safety as soon as possible. Are there any experienced a adventurers in the area that we can hire as muscle to back us up? Well, you've got a couple of town guards in. So the Knights of Kvostner in your duty here um, are mainly experienced as town guards but to get to wolverine level you need to have some uh, ability to handle yourself in the field as well so the two wolverines that are in the in the room with you would pro possibly be adventurers in that sense death by dragon would probably be a faster death than hanging also that way their death can have purpose and help the town and potentially buy enough time to prepare in a way that could save many lives yeah so there's a little pushback about like the the cruelty of um executing these prisoners as as sacrifices of town 
um, sacrificing them to dragons and things. But ultimately, it's it's not pursued as an option immediately, so they're not going into the nitty gritty of the details of that. Did the Acnists have any magic tools like wands that they could lend out? Um, you mentioned this, and the Acnists say, "Of course, we will lend our our um, expertise to the to the fight as as needed if, if a fight is what we decide." I too agree that we shouldn't pander to the 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 dragon. I I propose that we should make it seem like we're pandering to the dragon, and and then ambush when when safe. We don't need to trick the green dragon. We just need to trick its children. An illusion would work on animals. This part of Apis would prefer to keep the rat for milking and just track using our own natural abilities so the rat might tell us where the lair is without having to release it. It's also a possibility. Um, Briar, sort of, uh, Briar's probably the one to suggest that as well, to say, like, if we do if we do release it, though, and we've got no, no uh, live specimen for testing our antidotes and things. Yes, that's a good point, Ashley. Hunter's Mark only lasts an hour, unless you upcast it. We would have to hope that... The lair is uh, within an hour of travel for the rat, for a three-legged rat. Have the knights fought dragons before? You say this and both of them uh, sort of shake their heads and there's sort of a moment of silence as nope, nobody in the room has fought a dragon before. We tested the duration, pretty sure it lasted the same time as normal. Yeah, our buffed up hunter's mark lasts as long as normal, but the range has doubled. Can they use revivification magic on some of the dead hybrids? Potentially. Do you, su you suggest that? You say, is it possible to revivify some of the hybrids? And the druids say it's possible, but expensive and uh, not worth uh, not worth it for the information that we've got. We've already got a live hybrid, having uh, having to spend such a great deal of um, rare incense on bringing back uh, a creature. It's it wouldn't be a, a a worthy use of our of the town's expenses. So no, it's lair, and then what? Somebody suggests. Somebody says, even if we release that rat to to head back to its lair, then what? What what, what would we learn from that? If we fight, I don't give high odds to our winning, not unless we have a good deal of magic and spellcasters on our side and a way to cancel out the green dragon's breath weapon. Being that we're a dwarf, we are already uh, resistant to poison damage, so we take half damage that other people would. But with enough poison damage, it still doesn't matter. If there's a chance Tao Chu is alive, I really want to save them. Yeah, um, one of the one of the. Um, Knights agrees with you on that and says, "Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd, I really, I don't want to give up hope on Tao Chu. I, I, I want, I would, I would suggest that we go on a rescue mission. One of the, one of the benefits of pushing right now with a counter attack with as many people as possible, is that we get to, uh, potential, we have more chance of saving Tao Chu. Knowing the location of the lair isn't useless, but right now we just don't have a weapon to use to our advantage. And that's true." And the knights say, we're, we're the weapons. It's a young dragon. Polithan said herself, this is a young dragon. She, he, he'll be inexperienced in the art of deception and trickery like an a, a older green dragon would be. He won't expect the, the retaliation. Ask the dice if we and the collective might uh, fonder would be able to defeat this dragon and his children. All right, I think it's time for, I think it's time for um, Apis to make a call on what they want to do, what they vote. Uh, should be the plan of action here. Your five options are run away from town or evacuate the town. Either way, we are leaving the town, either with or without other people from town. Send stealthy assassin mission to try and sneak through their defences and get to the dragon and finish him off before the half-dragons know about it. Send an all-out attack. Many people as you can get together, go and mess up his army. Set up an ambush here in town. Or send out um, send out a, uh, actual sacrifices for a couple of days to buy ourselves some time. Maybe by which time there's reinforcements from other cities and things. All right. Ooh, at the last second there, they tied up. So with 37% of the vote each, send stealthy assassins and set up an ambush came in first place, joint first. So um, I'm going to drop placade him, send all out, all out attack, and run away. <clears throat> and we're going to repoll with those two made two first options. Apis won't have a deciding vote in the council, will they? Pretty much, yeah. That's pretty much what this is about. <laughs> you, are, you are the protagonist of this story, so you are helping me to decide which direction this story goes. So there's a lot of different options out there on the council, and you are having the deciding vote, essentially. Oh, at the last second! This is why every vote counts, and I say this every time. Until literally the last second, 
that was at 50-50. That was at that was at 33 votes for ambush here in town and 33 votes for sneaky assassin plan. And at the very last second, somebody voted for ambush here in town. So with 51% of the vote, Epis decides. I think it's. I think without knowing enough about the lair and the 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 situation out there in the forest. I think it's safer if we go with an ambush plan. We try and get it to come here, we try and ambush it. The form that, am that ambush takes is still up for debate, whether we send out an illusion, whether we send out a real sacrifice but try and save them, whether we send out a fake sacrifice that can try and join the fight, whatever that is, that's going to be the next form of discussion. But the plan going forwards for the town is we're going to try and ambush him. And we're going to try and ambush him tonight. Because otherwise we would have gone for the buy ourselves some time option. J.H. Park says we offer ourselves as a fake tribute. Ambush with sneaky assassins. Well, we'll be sneaky assassining as part of the ambush. Like, they'll be here to, like, hiding in, hide in the woods and things to oof, spring the ambush like he did with his people. A real sacrifice so it doesn't tip the dragon off. And if they survive, their sentence is commuted. Yeah, that could be a, definitely a good option to be like, hey, man, this is what's going on. You're going to die anyway, but if you do this thing for us, we might let, we might waive your um, your sentence. And so the uh, next hour or so of the meeting is going to be about how to deal with, how to set up this ambush. Let's try and think of all of the different possible options that we can use. We can send, we can use the wizards to send out an illusory, illusory um, ambush. The PEA say that as part of the ambush, however we're going to do it, the PEA, certain druids in the PEA, Polython particularly, has, a, has access to a spell called Earthbind, which uh, hopefully, if he fails a strength saving throw, can bring him to the floor and keep him on the floor so that people can like run in and hack and slash and kill him. But he has to fail a strength save and dragons are notoriously strong. So if there's something we can do to try and reduce his strength as well, that's also an option. Uh, the wizards say that uh, one of the wizard cl um, clan um, uh, Vala speaks up and says, I have, a, I have an ability that I can manipulate people's um, uh, blood it's sort of a blood bl blood bendy kind of ability um <clears throat> and i can bane him i can i can i can reduce the um the nature of his his checks and abilities and things it's probably like 10 or 11 in the morning now and the sun goes down about 6 p.m uh, this time of year so you've probably got about seven or eight hours at most to try and set to try and plan out and set up and execute this ambush on him you know that dragons are very smart and very cunning, uh, so we, you need to be equally smart. You need to be more smart than a dragon to try and outsmart him. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a tough one, but that's what this meeting's about. So the options are: we we use illusion magic to try and to try and send out um, this uh, this this possession and person who isn't actually there. They're just illusory, so we don't risk losing the bait during the during the battle. Uh, a lot of the council um, are against that, saying that a dragon would be able to see through it. But the wizards are for it, saying we're powerful enough to do it. We'll get, we'll get away with it. Um, another option is send out a real person, but have them be a plant, essentially. Have them be somebody who is who is not there to be sacrificed. They're, they're, a, they're a proficient fighter. They're one of these wolverines, or it's you maybe as a proficient uh, ranger or something. Someone who can handle themselves in a battle a little bit better. Um, the benefit to it being you uh, it goes through your mind is that you are a dwarf and so if it is if he does sort of sense it's an ambush and try and attack you early um you're more likely to be able to tank that poison damage than someone who's not a dwarf so send out a fake sacrifice is another option a third option is send out a real sacrifice so that you're not uh, like one of the one of the guys on death row so that you're not losing them uh, well if you lose them it's not that big of a deal because they were on death row anyway kind of kind of idea um, either way, we're going to send out uh, we, we, we're going to send out people to be surrounding that area of the, the path, um, like he was with his people. Um, send out the areas to, uh, people to hide in trees and like disguise themselves in ghillie suits and whatever illusory disguises for them. Somewhere or another, have our best the town's best fighters and arcanists and, and druids and things hiding in the bushes, waiting for him, so that when he comes, you can drop the ambush. Uh, is there any other option that I'm thinking? How? What else do we need to discuss in this meeting about how to set up this? 
Explosives would be relatively easy to improvise, a little Molotov-like explosives. Yeah, e explosives with gunpowder and things is not going to be easy to come by um, in this day and age, in this particular fantasy genre. Um, but explosives with fire is po is possible. There's alchemist's fire, there's, there's chemicals and med magical fire bombs that you can make. Just not really like explosive gunpowder and grenades and things. I think giving the death row people a chance to change their sentence by being the bait would be a good choice, yeah. The prisoner might give the game away if they... Yeah, so that's why we would tell the prisoner, like, hey, this is the deal, and if you survive it, you can... Like, if you go through with it, don't give the game away and survive, um, you can go free. So then they're more like they've got incentive to not give the game away. Are we supposed to be good aligned? If so, we wouldn't be willing to sacrifice ourself. Uh, we are currently neutral good, our current alignment. Is that right? I haven't assessed that in a while. Is that how you've been acting? I think so. You've definitely been good aligned lately. Lawful, neutral. I'd say probably on the verge between uh, lawful and neutral good. Can the illusion hide a fighting force, say, in a shallow pit? Yeah, we could use illusion magic to have a shallow pit, uh, uh, like a foxhole, essentially, dug into the path. And then people can like be bobbed down and then, boom, jump up and spring the attack. Very how well people are hidden so he thinks an ambush is smaller than it actually is brings a little back up so they actually surprise him with a large attack force yeah because he'll be expecting you to have some sort of an ambush so he'll see the ambush and go Psh, that's all they're ambushing me with and then he jumps in and it's like nope those were the those were the decoy ambush this is the real ambush good that could work how could we trust someone who has committed a crime heinous enough for a death sentence to follow that command if i was the prisoner's shoes i'd run away that's definitely possible you could send them out in shackles if you were worried about that Robert, do we know what the weaknesses of a green dragon are? Um, from your from your understanding of green dragons, they don't have any particular weaknesses. Pointy things shot with enough force to pierce their scales is their weakness. They're not like vulnerable to fire or like if you turn around clockwise and then touch your nose, they don't go ah. Like they don't have weird weaknesses or any sort of known vulnerabilities. They're weak to swords and axes <laughs> with enough force. We're at risk of having casualties whichever path we choose. Yeah, of course, definitely. Tie up the prison like a goat in Jurassic Park, yeah. Do we think it's the son of our dragon? That's up to you to decide. Do you, do you think that? My question, prisoner being both able, to, able and willing to fake sacrifice well enough to trick the dragon. There's also the option that we don't tell the prisoner that, that it's an ambush. And if we were worried about them giving the game away or whatever, we, just, we could just tell them the prisoner, hey, it's death row, and instead of hanging you, we're going to feed you to a dragon. And then we send out the prisoner alive and tied up and like oh fuck and then he and then he's given a very real performance of i'm about to be eaten by a dragon can the poison gas cloud be set on fire that's one of the things that you probably would have tested already that that would be known probably um I'll, it's it's information about dragons so i'll roll with advantage and history uh, nature nature and advantage because it pertains to dragons and that's your favorite enemy that's an 18 18 plus your uh, proficiency, you would know that green dragon poison clouds are not flammable poison clouds. Anyway, to enchant some helmets and armors to give resistance to poison to armed forces in the next seven hours, not doable. Somebody in the, somebody, like the, let's say one of the knights suggests it, like is it possible that we have poison resistance armor and the knight and the arcanists dismiss it and say it's possible but not within seven hours, it'd take weeks. On the pit in the ground, that's where we could hide the flammable material, true. Tip some spears with manticore spines. We did learn that Manticore spines are particularly good at piercing armor because of their strong sort of uh, organic metal makeup. What weapons does the town have? Any war machine like Ballista? Not really. They've got small, they've got large crossbows, which are the same, same as sort of like a small Ballista. And they've got those mounted onto, uh, they're fixed and mounted on top of the palisade walls. Is there a way to blind the dragon? Like with magic and things? That's one of the things that the, uh, the, the arcanists can try and do during the the fight. What if the dragon sends out scouts that walk over the pit? That's definitely an option, definitely a possibility that he would do. How much does this dragon care about his children? We can use. Well, he's he's clearly used some of them as uh, as fodder to try and work out the defenses of the town. So he doesn't obviously care about them in the same way that a human father would hopefully care about his children. We can use the rat dragon as a hostage tactic to distract him. No, Apis would know that definitively would not work. He didn't. Okay. He literally sent the dragon that you have in your the dragon rat that you have in your possession was literally sent out to to get hit by a, a ballista bolt just so the dragon would um, would know the range of the ballista bolts. 
So he wouldn't now give a shit whether or not it survives. We have heavy crossbows, no ballista. Yeah, the, I'm using I'm using uh, stats for for the ballistas of the town. I'm using a stats that are sort of a cross between a heavy crossbow and a ballista. They're like halfway between the two, essentially. Netting. We could try and drop nets on it to keep it to the ground. Main problem with the plan to dig holes everywhere to hide in. We only have like seven or eight hours to get this done, and we know they have half mole, half mole characters. Yeah, uh, a half mole, half dragon. Chances are they would be able to tell that there are holes dug around the area. Very possible as well. Spiked pit trap requires something falling into it. But if he's a dragon and can fly. All right. So I think the first choice to make. We can talk about this all day. I'm sure. Round and around and around we go. I'm going to put a poll together now. Um, it's going to be who should be the sacrifice. That's the that's the poll. No one. So you don't make a sacrifice at all. You deliberately anger the the green dragon. He comes down and sees that there's no sacrifice and goes, what the fuck are you playing with? Blah, blah, blah. And then you spring an attack on him at that point. Like get his anger up so he's not thinking clearly and then attack him, maybe. Um, an illusion. Kind of like no one, but at least he thinks until the very last moment that there isn't a, a person there. Don't send anyone out at all. Send out an illusion. Send out um, uh, yourself, you. I'll just put Apis so it's not clear. It's clear. Apis. So Apis will volunteer and say like, I'm I'm perfectly fine with I'm, like dragons are my favorite enemy. I'm good with absorbing poison. I'm a good fighter. I can I can nope out of there. I can misty step. I, I would be a good sacrifice. So that's one of the options. Um, another proficient fighter. So like, not you, but somebody else who's a good fighter. Uh, I'll put another good fighter because otherwise I can't add it all in. Another good fighter. Or uh, death row. Death row inmate. All right. Almost half of Apis's mind decides that they should be the vote, but there's enough confusion in there that um, it sort of muddies it. So I'm going to lose all the other options. 76% of the vote, Apis says, if we're using a sacrifice, it should be me. And uh, the, the, there's kind of like a little bit of why, um, not necessarily not necessarily pushback, but like explain yourself. And you, exp you lay it out. You say, I've been studying green dragons for this. Do, do you at this point, just with a yes or no emote in the chat, do you explain uh, a little more of your history with Unguhef and uh, Shafgushal? Do you mention that you have history with green dragons? Or do you just leave it as, I have studied them and not really give the reasons for why? All right, I'm not seeing any no's, so I'm gonna take that as a, as a very solid yes. Not everything, you don't need to go into detail about your family that you found dead and things like that. Um, but you say, I have history with green dragons I'm, I was born and raised in Shafgushal, and there's sort of like a, just a hush comes over. You say, Ungehef destroyed my town, destroyed my family. I know what the, I know what green dragons are capable of. I know what I'm putting myself forward for. I'm not doing so lightly. You all know that as a dwarf, my blood is stronger than yours at dealing with poisons. I can resist them. I can, I, I'm not as easy to succumb to a poison as some of you, as any of you. You look around and realize there's no other dwarf in the room with you. So yeah, you can definitively say you would, we would be stronger than any of them at resistant poisons. What's more is I've studied dragons ever since that incident. I have spent years studying dragons. I've learnt draconic language. I can speak to it as my, as the bait, as the, as the sacrifice. I can speak to it. I can I can understand what it's wanting. I'll be able to tell its movements and predict them slightly easier than perhaps any of you who haven't studied dragons your whole life. What's more is I'm very capable with a bow, and probably I don't want to be immod I don't want to be immodest about it. But I'm one of the best hunters in this in this town right now, and and in a in a in a fight I can handle myself. Especially if I've got my companion uh, Mel with me and other other very capable fighters around and you kind of gesture to the rest of them. I'm also touched with certain abilities, certain magical abilities. The gods have looked on me favourably. I can cure myself of, um, of illness. 
uh, and, and, and injury. I can stealth if needed. I've, recent, I've even recently discovered an ability to shift from one place to another without moving. I'm probably the best equipped to, to be the bait in this situation. And people are sort of like nodding but not saying anything, so you seem like it seems like they're getting on, on board. And then you say, and what's more is, I started this. I'm the champion that he wants. Even if this ambush goes to shit and, and he's angered by it, the best shot we have of him leaving the town alone in future is to give him me. And there's agreement, there's sort of like quiet murmuring of agreement and until eventually one of the uh, patrons says I hate to admit it but you raise some very good points and I think you are correct. If we go ahead with this ambush Apis is to be our sacrifice. So that part of the operation, that part of the plan is in effect. The illusionist says, um, by, by now during the, I'll just tell you their names because by now you would have, um, during the meeting you would have heard people referring to them by name. Uh, the illusionist, the hobbledehoy, uh, half hobbit, half human, is called Rebecca. Um, there's Vala, you know, from the arcanists on Taunt. Um, the knights that you're speaking with are called Nambra. Nambra is the high elf. In fact, I can put the, I can put their names in, in chat here. Nembra, High Elf, Wolverine, uh, and then the other Wolverine is Nathine. Nathine, Rock Gnome, Wolverine. Then there's Vala, you know, and Rebecca's just spelled like Rebecca. Uh, and then who else was the? There was Tammy. You didn't learn. You wouldn't have learned the uh, the name of the scrunner. Nobody's nobody's referred to him or talked to him yet. He's just been silently standing in the corner. He's a human with um, half moon specs on, and he's writing on a on a little um, like a podium, a table, stand a stand up table. That he's writing away, and you can hear his tip tapping of his um, his quill into the ink pot, and then dap dap. He's keeps there's the occasional as he puts his roller over and blots the ink before turning a page over and continuing but other than that he hasn't said anything um who else is in the room with you you know briar of course you know polython uh you know the mayor did i give you the mayor's name i don't know if i did give you the mayor's name did i um where is he <laughs> no i didn't because i would have remembered that um his name, uh, somebody refers to him as uh, Mayor Gardens and somebody else refers to him more uh, more um, impersonally as Chuffy. His name is Mayor Chuffy Gardens. So you, uh, where was I? So so you, uh, you hear from Rebecca that she says, uh, as an illusionist, she can help to disguise your uh, weapons so that you will be going out there dressed as you are, um, but without your... Uh, without it, it'll, it'll make it look like you are not holding a bow and quiver and and long sword at your hip, and then you'll be able to as soon as you attack with them, they'll they'll become visible again. But until such a time, she can she can illus illusionary um, make your weapons look dis look look like they've gone away. Um, so she, that's what she's going to offer to it. She's going to make you illusionary. She's also going to help with trying to uh, uh, trying to make the the area of the path that you're going out to, the area where Tautu was killed. Uh, she's going to make the surrounding forest around that look, um, like hide the people who are hiding in the bushes. Uh, Vala will also help with that. Vala, uh, Polython says that her and the druids will be standing nearby to try and um, try and charm the animals that are under his command and to try and focus on bringing him down to the ground with Earthbind. That's her part of the plan. The fighters will be hiding close by so, so that they can just jump out. The wolverines and the badgers of town will be hiding close by to jump out. Getting the ballista off of the walls and putting them onto something mobile might help. So that's something that's suggested to the knights. <clears throat> it would leave them open to a, an attack from the south. If they took the ballista from the south wall, took them off uh, to the north end of town and then like started carting them around so that you can get them close to the fight. It's definitely an option to try and kill this dragon, but... 
um, it's risky. So they're ass assessing that during this meeting as well. Um, can we ask the Arcanists for a cursed item to make the sacrifice seem more real so Fonda can gain some advantage if we die? Like something cursed? Yeah, okay. So we uh, we ask the uh, Arcanists, do you have anything cursed? Do you have any items that are cursed um, that we could use as our, our gift so that if this all goes tits up, um, then the thing that it takes back to its hoard is cursed and it's like it's more likely that we can survive again in future. Um, I'm not sure if the Arcanists would have so and that's a D12, I don't want that, a D10. Would the Arcanists have any cursed items? They definitely would have uh, items, the, especially Vala, she's um, uh, part art artificer, so she's interested in items and magical things. So she would probably have cursed items. I'm going to see if she's got anything that she's like willing to part with anything that's um, that's actually going to be useful in the moment. Because a lot of curses might just like makes you a bit hairy or makes you makes you makes your skin a bit more sweaty, <laughs> make turns turns you blue and like things that wouldn't actually help. So she's pro she's got cursed items like that. But I'm going to roll to see if she's got anything that's actually useful in this situation. I'm going to go with what's the chances of her having something that might be useful? Okay. She does. All right. She says, um, that's a good idea. Uh, I do have something, yes. Now I'm going to head over to my, um, I'm going to head over to my, my curses. I've got a bunch of homebrewed curses and little plug here. If you want to see all of my homebrewed items and curses and, and all of that stuff, um, then you can do so by becoming a, D, uh, a Patreon, a patron on Patreon, where you get access to a whole bunch of my homebrewed things. Homebrewed races, homebrewed lingering injuries, homebrewed beasts and feats and items and monsters and playable races and things. One of these items is new curses. But 20 curses on my homebrewed curse list currently. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to roll for that. 15. What's the 15th one down? 2019, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15. Curse of slipping. She says, um, I have a, I have an item that it's a, it's a very inopportune, uh, it's a very in, it's a very unfortunate curse to have on a person that re requires feet for walking because when cursed with this particular item it, it, it at inopportune moments you will cast the grease spell centered on yourself and likely you will slip and fall and potentially hurt yourself or make yourself um, uh, difficult but against a creature that can fly perhaps not however if one of its minions one of its its offspring comes for this item then it could curse them and this giant boar is much less efficient at running and tusking and goring us or even chasing after us if uh, if it greases itself if it becomes a greased pig so it could potentially um it could potentially still help but i doubt i doubt it would be as useful against the um the uh, dragon I'm going to roll with a decreasing chance to see if she has another cursed item as well. Is grease flammable? I always think of it like um, like fat from it, like like grease from an animal fat or something. So it probably would be somewhat flammable, but not like it's not like oil. It's not quite cooking oil, um, so it wouldn't be as oil, as flammable as like a, a chip chip fat fryer, but um, it would be somewhat flammable. Um, unfortunately, that's the only, uh, with a 52, that does not beat the, um, that does not beat the chances of her having two such cursed items. So she does have an, an item that would in, in, imbue the, uh, the uh, curse of slipping. The character with a curse, uh, the character with a curse of slipping is cursed with slipping over at the most inopportune moments. A number of times per day, at the DM's choosing, slash when it is most inconvenient for the character, grease is cast, centred on them. I'm also going to roll a d6 to see whether it's a light, moderate, or severe curse. Five. With a five, it is a light curse. It occurs once per day. So somebody cursed with the curse of slipping, once per day, casts grease, centred on themselves. 
Um, okay, so that's an option. We have we have that. Um, what do you guys think about using that as the the gift? Because the the dragon specifically asked for a sacrifice of a person and a possession, a prized possession of the town. If she gave you this item, this cursed item, so that it's better than nothing, it can it can curse this uh, dragon with the grease curse. If we manage to cripple it on the ground, then it could still slip and stuff. With the curse effect tapis, if you were holding it, there's a good chance it would, yes. But if you manage to like not hold it, if you manage to not touch it, wear gloves or something, it will look magic. Yeah, it will definitely look like magic if the dragon had some sort of detect magic or something. Magic. Use our magic rope to pretend to tie ourselves up again, like we did with the manticore. Rope in one hand, bow and bow with an oct arrow in the other. Pretend to struggle as we get taken out. That's that could be a cool idea, Sparrow. Yeah. What does the item look like? Uh, what do you guys think? Help me out with this one. What um, what do you think this I item would be? It would likely have come from some sort of a some sort of a hoard, uh, some sort of a treasure from ages past. Maybe it was an ancient thing from some uh, ruins that have been uncovered and is now being studied by the arcanists for its ability. What would it look like? Some sort of a crown, a golden pitcher, a hair clip, a golden locket, an ankh. Ooh, an ankh would be cool. Just like a, 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 a yeah, I kind of like that. I was thinking of it as an object that you would have on your shelf or something rather than wearing it. So not a crown or a locket, but I do like the ankh. Just some kind of ancient symbol. Chainmail underwear. A glass flower folded over. Ooh, I quite like that one. A little like a bronze gravy boat. I quite like that one actually as well. A, a bronze gravy boat, just something inconspicuous that someone would touch and be like, "Ah oh, shit!" and it would, and it like fills with grease and <laughs> slops it over. And I kind of like that one. Hmm. Let's let's mix some of these together. It's like an ornamental. Uh, it's like a a well a well made uh, bronze gravy boat that has um, as its handle. It's like a wilting flower, kind of like a not a tulip. They don't. What's the flowers that are kind of like a bluebell? Those are the ones that kind of droop over anyway, right? Naturally. So it's got like a wilting flower as the um, as the handle. A snowdrop, that's a good one, yeah. It's a ceremonial, um, a ceremonial bronze gravy boat with nice decorative sides. And it's got a snowdrop um, handle that wilts over, um, made out of glass or something. Uh, something something nice and, and looks expensive. Looks like the sort of thing that if you went, went into a room and was like, oh yeah, and you were stealing shit, you'd steal that and it's cursed so that you slip over while you while you're running away with it. That's what it looks like. Decided. Boom. Got to put that in my notes after the session. Um, so she tells you this in the meeting, says that this is the, this is the item and she can give you it, but if you touch it, you, you uh, potentially come, succumb to the curse unless your body's strong enough to fight it off. Um, so it'd be like, it would be smart for you to wear gloves or to put this thing inside of a box that you then present. Um, a small wagon. Yeah, she says that, uh, the the the, um, the lady from the um, I was want to say Arcanist Entente, the uh, Artisanal Alliance. The lady from the Artisanal Alliance says we can spare you a a small cart, a small wheelbarrow type cart that you can put this this um, this gravy boat in as a as a as a gift without actually touching it yourself. Can the illusion cover invisible gloves? Um, you ask that, and um, Rebecca says it's it's she, she's already going to be stretching herself pretty thin, um, casting the illusion of your over your weapons, and also trying to hide people who are hiding nearby. It's going to be a lot like that's going to be all of her powers. She's not, and there's not that many other wizards in town, so it's a shame we don't have mage hand. Yeah, I know, right? Put it in a chest. Do we want it open to be able to see? Like, oh look, it's a cool thing though and make it less suspicious because the dragon if he is smart and cunning and and um suspicious he will probably see a closed chest and think are they presenting me with a mimic or a or a is a bomb if i open it up or whatever so if we have it in an open box wagon or crate or something can the cart be soaked in oil so it's extremely flammable potentially yeah but the dragon might be able to smell that or see it we should be escorted out by some badges tied up uh, with the box in a wagon. Yeah, that's a smart idea. Snafu, I think that's probably the idea. So we talk about it a little more. The plan goes, hide people as much as possible, illusion uh, them so that they're, they're hard to see, 
tie us up with our magic rope with our hand on one of the uh, one end of the rope so that with a single command we can drop it and untie ourselves we've got an illusionary bow in one hand and quiver on our hip also uh, invisible we like struggling no no i don't want to die i don't want to die the dragon lands um the knights that are there with the crate leave it and back up back to the town and we go no 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 and then when we're ready to start the uh, the ambush we say the command word, the rope falls off of us, and we sh- and set the set the ambush off, and everybody jumps in and does their thing. The druid hiding nearby, earthbind tries to keep it on the floor. Um, some of the knights will probably have nets on them to try and like hunt it, catch it. Uh, maybe throwable um, bolluses or what are they called? That like the hunt bear traps, but on chains that they can like launch a bear trap at them and try and catch it and anything to keep this thing on the ground. So those sorts of details are, um, are hashed out. It's getting late in the day now. It's probably like half 11 or something by the time the meeting comes to an end. We have several hours um, of the day left to um, to put this plan into action. Is there anything else that we need to discuss at the meeting before Apis and everybody like dismisses this meeting and goes off to actually talk, uh, to, to actually put this plan into, uh, put the talk to actual action? Anything specific you want to ask the rat? That's a good idea. Good point, Batman. Thank you. Um, you say, uh, I'm going to go back to PEA and start interrogating this live rat if we can. Um, is there anything specific we need from it? And it's the usual stuff. Uh, how many of its kind are there? Like, how many brothers and sisters does it have? Um, where does the dragon live, if possible? Um, how long has it been in the area? Does it have any weaknesses? How much has it already got? Does, does it keep people alive? Um, has it got like people in its in its hall already? All of these things that you would probably think to ask anyway. Anyone have gust of wind to keep breath away from town? Um, yeah, the we we talk about that in the meeting as well as the meeting sort of starting to wrap up. Uh, we ask the we ask them that, and the um, the druids say, okay, well we'll we can either have a couple of the druids. We've only got like five or six druids. Uh, Polython's the most in charge, and she has to be in she has to be in as part of the ambush to try and like bring this guy to the ground with Earthbind, because the other druids wouldn't um, be powerful enough to have Earthbind as a spell. I don't think. Actually, let me double check that. I can't, I can't remember exactly what level Earthbind is, but I think it's like fourth level. Might be less than that, though. Let me double check that. Because if it's if it's a lower level spell, then one of the lower level druids could cast it instead. Oh, it's only second level. I don't play druids often, very often. So yeah, like a third level druid would be able to cast that. If they have it prepared, which they wouldn't necessarily have prepared for the day. I'll have to think about this before we actually get to the thing. There'll be at least one druid there of third level or higher to try and cast Earthbind on it. Polython would therefore be better to use to stay in town, if that's the case, to um, to, to cast a, a higher level gust um, to, to protect the count, uh, to town with Wall of Wind or something? Wall of... Wind Wall is it called? Wind Wall. Windwall is a third level spell that should be able to protect the town from uh, from smoke breath because of that. The strong wind keeps fog, smoke and other gases at bay. Small or smaller flying creatures or objects can't pass through the wall. Loose, lightweight materials brought into the wall fly upwards, arrows and bolts and such. So she would she'd probably stand in town and do that while somebody else is casting Earthbind on her. So her details, will she'll have to um, hash that out before the actual time comes. Did anyone ask about weather yet? That's a good question. Let me um, let me check. Um, how cold is it on a scale of one to ten? It is it is middle of spring, isn't it? So six a six out of ten on the coldness for uh, so it's slightly above uh, average for a, a, a mid spring day. Um, and in terms of weather, how rainy is it? How wet or humid is it? From a scale of one to ten, nine. Pretty grey and rainy. There's a nine on a nine on the humid scale, so it is starting to drizzle. By the time this meeting is is over, um, the drizzle that was happening as you were entering the meeting hall has turned into rain, just like a, a regular sort of light rain. Um, well, a, leg, a regular medium rain, and it seems like uh, it's going to be raining for the next few hours. It might have cleared up by. Um, dusk, but it's going to definitely be wet. Rain is bad for arrows and bowstrings, yeah. I don't know. Polython might 
I don't think Polython's strong enough to control the weather yet. She's not that high a level druid, I don't think. Let me just check what level control weather is. It's an eighth level spell. Polython is not powerful enough to do it. Um, so whatever the weather is, you'll have to deal with it. Would rain disperse the poison cloud by the dragon? Not necessarily, no wind would, but rain wouldn't. Stab stab with the manticore spines. What do you want to do with the manticore spines? Like put them, like yeah, use the manticore spined arrows or your manticore dagger? What do you mean? Or like give the rest of your manticore spines to the knights so that they can affix them to ballista bolts. Because I think you've got like six manticore spines left, something around there. If you want to give those six to the, um, the, the knights, they can affix them to the front of a ballista bolt. Manticore tipped arrows. Part of the amb ambush to increase their chances. Yeah, so the people. I'll put them on bow, bow and arrows. Ballista bolts or bow and arrows? On the ballista. The ballista bolt manticore seems like the best idea. Alright, thumbs up in the chat if you want to give the last of your manticore spines, or six of them, to the Knights of Kavosna with the instruction to affix them to the front of their ballista bolts. Their, their heavy crossbow bolts. Alright. Not quite unanimous, but with an overwhelming majority, um, Apis, uh, before they leave the meeting, reaches down into their bag, grabs these manticore spines, and hands off the rest of them to the Knights of Kavosna and says, these are spines from a manticore. They're made out of a, an organic metal uh, and they, they can pierce things um, a lot better than others. I've got I've got mine tipped onto arrows. Uh, actually, these were from the teeth of the manticore. Yeah, same, same diff. Uh, if you can affix them to um, to six ballista bolts, you're more likely to be able to pierce the armor of the uh, the dragon. And so they will do so. They 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 will work on that for the next six hours, or they'll get the blacksmiths of town to work on some ballista bolts. And by by time dusk comes around, they should have those arrows ready for you. All right. Anything in? anything else before we leave the meeting and head to the Knights of Cov uh, the PEA? Once we get to the PEA, we're going to be training Mel on the way. We're going to be training Mel for a little bit a time between now and the the ambush anyway um we've also got to talk to the um we've got to talk to the rat and get as much information as we can that'll all be next session at this stage um anything else we want to talk to the mayor the other knights of Gavosna, or um the artisanal alliance about because we're going to be going with the druids to do some druid stuff how to prevent the babies from discovering the ambush and warning daddy um that would be that's that's going to be on the. That's going to be mostly on the the um, PEA. I think the rangers and druids of that guild will be out in the forest of uh, of that around that path, trying to remove the babies from the area. And if they come into the area, trying to persuade them to not tell us, not tell on us with animal handling and control animals and other things that they have. Need to check on Sam potions we need apis to say in the fight longer yeah the potions will be coming from the um pea they were they we we got them the um we got them the ingredients to make a health potion and they said that they would give us one so apis needs to remember that next time to ask for a, a potion of healing let them see a small amount of it so he under prepares and we can actually surprise him with more unanticipated numbers yeah it's a good idea as well but again that's close to the time not something that we need to talk about in the meeting right now well, we do. We mention it in the meeting, and it's mentioned. But checking that that's actually been done is a is a matter of like last minute prep before the meeting's done, before the uh, ambush is triggered. Can we say something like, "If we don't make it, please sort out the fiend. Please don't let them screw over more people." Uh, yes, in the chat, if you want Apis to mention the fiend and the thieves guild that they've had run in recently with, um, and know if Apis decides against it, it seems like a. A yes, uh, it seems like something to put to the chat about yes or no's. It seems like most people are against the idea. So we think about it, and we think about mentioning the fiend, and then we think the town's got enough to deal with right now. If the fiend is related to the mayor, they could be in cahoots. That's a good point. Do we make sure the townsfolk take cover and stay out of the streets would help keep them safer? Um, yeah, you mentioned that to the knights as well, and they say, we're, we're doing what we can. And they kind of dismiss you in a way to say, like, don't don't tell me how to do my job. You're not a knight of Kavosna sort of uh, dismissal. They're like, yeah, we're, we're we're working on it. We know how to we know how to police a town. We could ask Sam to tell the knights about our encounter with the fiend if the worst should happen to us. 
Yeah, well, Sam knows about it now, so if something does happen to us, then she, that would obviously be up to her at this point. Um, all right, so as you leave the meeting uh, to go off back to um, the PEA, um, thumbs up if you want to visit Sam first, and thumbs down if you want to just go straight to the PEA. Uh, about half and half here, so I'm going to have to put it to a poll, I think. Just a really quick one-minute poll. It's literally 50-50. It's neck and neck all the way up. The last vote will do it. The last vote will tick it if there's the last one. Eh, last second again. Twice in this one session we've had a 50-50 vote right unto, up until the very last second when somebody votes and ticks it over. So with 51% of Apis going, uh, yes, no, we kind of broke up. It, it, was it weird? We we said we'd be friends, though, so it's not weird for me. And she's also a very good hunter, so she'd help us in the fight. Uh, ultimately, you go, okay, I, I'm, I, so P, uh, Pen, uh, Polython says, um, right, we should uh, we should get going. We've much to prepare for and much to discuss. And, and uh, Briar says, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, let's go. Uh, and then you say, I'm, I'll, I'll be right behind you. I'm just going to pop to um, a friend's place. Uh, she's very use she's a very good hunter. And, and Polython says, uh, I understand. And um, say no more kind of thing. And leaves. As you leave the um, office of the mayor's place, you, you notice that the crowd outside has dispersed. There's still a bunch of people, like maybe, maybe about a dozen or so spread around. But it's not like 40 like they were before. Um, so there's like a dozen people, uh, some of which are um, squires of the Knights of Kvosna who are still explaining to people as they're turning up, what's happening, what's happening, Is there, was there really a dragon this morning? I didn't see it. And, you, and then they're being sent away with vague information of like, yes, there's a dragon, it's it's uh, not attacking, um, blah, blah, blah. And you move past them out into the streets, make your way to the hunting spot. Uh, you see that it's closed with a, a sign on the door saying, um, closed for the day. Uh, you knock on the window. Do, 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 do. I'm gonna see if she is home and wants to talk. She, <coughs> she is home. She does come to the door after like two minutes. Um, you see the back door open to the the shop, and she comes out to the shop and she sees you. And then she um, walks across and. Uh, she unlocks the door, takes the thing off, and then just opens it, uh, but doesn't like open it all the way and let you in. She just like opens it and says, "Yes, what is it?" Um, nope, she wasn't Welsh. She says, "Yes, what is it?" You say, "Um, I was checking that you're okay, and also uh, you've heard the news." And she says, "Of course, I've heard the news. Yes, what, 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 what was it? What happened? What, what, what's going on?" And you say, "Uh." The green dragon came down, attacked, and uh, took away Tauchu, but um, blah blah blah. You try and explain as much as you can. <clears throat> and then you, what do you, what do you want? The people who wanted to come here, what, what were you asking for? You were asking to see if she's okay, to ask if she wants to join in the, 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 the hunt, the, the ambush. What, what, the people who wanted to come to Sam, what, what were you wanting to talk to her about? What was, what was the point? Ask if she'll join the ambush. Anything else? Tell her we might not be alive after the plan. So you tell her this is um, this is the plan. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how much of it I'm allowed to say yet or not, but you should know. Um, I'm going to be out there. We're, we're doing a an ambush on the dragon tonight, and she's like, her eyes go a little wider. You say, ambush the. Um, the dragon tonight uh, we're going to send out at, at its request we're going to send out um, me as as bait and she like let's make an insight check on that 12 12 plus insight 14 she reacts to it but it's hard to know exactly how she's she's heard you she's listening um, we're going to have a bunch of people around um, prepared to jump out and attack when he lands and tries to take me. Uh, I also will be attacking obviously to defend myself and so we're hoping that he will go down. Um, I was hoping that you might, well I wanted to put it to you as an option for you to decide. Do you want to join in on the ambush? Do you, you're, a, you're a very proficient hunter, you've taught me how to hunt uh, 
better how to be a quicker hunter. Would you like to be there for the hunt? I'm going to roll you a persuasion check. I'm just going to first make the DC based on everything that's going on for her. Um, you are not proficient in persuasion, but you do have a plus one charisma, so it's just going to be this plus one. Does she want to be involved? Who is she? What does she value? Okay. Three. A three plus one is a four on our persuasion check. We sort of stammer and stumble and we realise that during our trying, our attempt to persuade her to join in the fight, um, we're, we're making it sound like it's a lot more dangerous than we think it might be and, and like we're really... We're not doing a good job of explaining what the plan is, and so it doesn't seem like we've got much of a plan. And, and, and we realise that we're doing we're doing a bad job of trying to persuade her to do this, and it's unlikely that she's going to say yes. Do you want to use inspiration or lucky horseshoe to re-roll that? This was not good. Why did we come here? Most people saying no. We're not going to re-roll that. It and salmon not meant to be. We're fighting a dragon, how much more dangerous does it need to be? Well, no, it's not about making it more dangerous. It's about making her feel like she's not going to be in as much danger when she's out there helping us fight. Stuttering ourselves because we're understandably terrified of being putting ourselves in this situation. Yeah. All right. That's an overwhelming no on re-rolling, so we're just going to go with that four on persuasion. It was a really low DC as well because she was, because of the circumstances. She, was, she is a hunter and she uh, does, uh, doesn't want to see you come to harm and things. But there is also that trepidation in herself of being out there in, in the front line and getting in the way of this plan that doesn't seem to her like it's very well thought out and stuff. So it wasn't a very high DC, but it was higher than a four. So she says, I'll, um, I'll, d I'll, I'll think about it. Thank you for letting me know the plan. Um, but I'm, I'm, I don't know if I'll be there. I, I, can't, I, can't, I don't know if I'll be of use to anyone in this situation. I'm not good um, with... I should, I should, I should go. You've got things to plan. Thank you for coming to me um, and telling me this. Um, you, you be, be as safe as you can out there. It sounds like a sounds like a dangerous idea. Um, and you say, right? Well, if you don't come, um, just stay safe. Yeah, yeah, you too. And then closes the door and puts the lock back on it. Um. And then you head to the PEA. You head south of town. Um, you get to the the knights who are on the gate, uh, on the gate, and you explain to them that you're you're needed at the PEA, and it takes a little bit of um, persuasion, but you manage to get them to open the door for you, open the gate, let you out, and um, and head out. There's, you notice that a few people are um, making their way out of town. There's there's a few people that have hastily packed up and have and are taking horses and small horse and cart sort of thing, and there's quite a few people that are trying to leave and evacuate and just flee Fondurg, move south as, as much as they can. Um, and it's still early. It's only like four hours at most, maybe three hours uh, since the dragon attacked. So these people are, are the ones that have gone home, grabbed some belongings and are out immediately. Like it's, they've not gotten much, um, not gotten much time to prepare, but they don't need much time. A few people are like, nope, j jump, jump off. This ship is starting to leak. Um, and to each their own. So you make your way 10 minutes walk-ish out, out of uh, town to the south, about a kilometre walk. Uh, you get to the um, the greenhouse standing there on the left side of the path, just after the farms. Um, and you make your way in. You see that uh, a, a patch where there had been previously a, sh a small crop plot, um, that, that crop plot has been taken up off of the surface and moved to the side, and it is a not exactly sterile um metal desk where the, uh, the the rat is currently sitting uh, it's got some straps over it some leather straps tying it to the table um, making sure that it wasn't freaking out and running around because as you talk to them apparently it was um, and as you enter the greenhouse to start this preparation for tonight's um, tonight's ambush that's where I'm going to leave it today and we'll pick up with your preparation for the ambush next week Thank you very much for joining me, everybody. I'll see you then. Bye.